I received this nice Ansonia brass carriage clock today. It has some damage on the beveled glass. I've got another case for parts. The pendulum is an authentic, true heat compensating mercury pendulum. The old houses in the older days were mostly heated with coal or wood in the winter. The heat differential between winter and summer was great. All pendulum clocks would speed up in the winter time and slow down during the hot summer months because the pendulums would get longer during the summer due to the metal expanding and slow down during the winter due to the metal in the pendulum rod shrinking. To prevent the need of continuously adjusting the pendulum, mercury was confined in these glass vials. When the temperature got hot, the mercury expanded and moved up in the vial and would change the center of weight of the pendulum and it would compensate for the heat and maintain a constant swing and vice versa for the cold winter time. The brass case has lost a lot of its clear protective finish, probably originally a clear lacquer. It's been handled with oily fingers and the acid in the fingerprint oils has tarnished the exposed brass. Unprotected brass should always be cleaned after handling with bare hands or corrosion will set in. The movement is held in with three screws. The dial is porcelain. Identical dials can be found with other clock companies' names printed on them. This one has the Ansonia name. These dials were not fabricated by the Ansonia Clock Company, but by a company that specialized in making dials. Several hairline cracks with greenish stains. The green stains next to the cracks are the underlying copper base metal that's oxidizing. Another hairline next to the 12. Otherwise the dial is in excellent condition. the gong and the gong mount. The fastener nut is original, cast iron with a gold finish on it. Very good shape. A piece of broken glass from the case left pallet stone has several chips in it, but doesn't affect its function. The bridge for the escape wheel has been butchered. There is a stress crack here, two marks, dents, and scars on it. Screw head is broken. It should be fixed to match the other one to look right. A chip in the porcelain next to the mounting screw left from a butcher. Probably happened when the mounting screw head broke off. I'll evaluate this crack after it's removed. This section of the porcelain dial is mounted on springs. They were meant to float slightly. Someone tightened it so tight they broke the head off the screw and chipped the dial. And Sonia name stamped on the back of the plate. The back plate was highly polished brass at one time and it had a protective lacquer finish when new. The protective lacquer finish is no longer intact. The raw brass shows signs of oxidizing. Here on this pivot, you can see signs of over oiling. The oil has spread out from the pivot and has run down the face of the plate. This pivot as well has been over oiled 
An oil stain can be seen where the excess oil ran down the plate. Fingerprint damage here. A lot of oxidation on the brass. Oil on this pivot is contaminated with dirt and has turned to grease. Time to disassemble. Not sure the best way to remove this butchered screw. I'll try a couple ways. escape wheel bridge is quite scarred up. Owner claims it's been keeping good time, just won't run for very long. Someone bent this in several places for some reason. It doesn't fit true to a flat surface. If it's straightened, the relationship of it to the escape wheel pivot will be thrown off. Might be best to leave it as is for the moment and see how it runs before I decide to do something with it. Here's part of the spring-loaded mount that holds the porcelain piece. A nice Brokaw escapement. Escape wheel. Someone has oiled the gear teeth and pinion on it. Not a good practice. The oil ends up collecting dirt particles. Causes accelerated wear and quickly turns black. some old dried oil. Now we can see the extent of the chip in the porcelain. Several higher line cracks. You can see where the brass decorative pieces have been mounted using solder. Very sloppy soldering job on these. This porcelain on the back Looks like it has burned marks on it. Must have been overheated in the kiln. More springs used in the floating system for the dial. Oil that has dried up to a grease consistency. Yet here the oil looks clean and fresh. How does this happen?
thick, chunky, dried oil. Doesn't look like this movement was taken apart on the last couple cleanings. You can see where the cleaning solvent didn't get washed from the brass. It etched into the brass plate here, where the mainspring barrels were mounted. Over oiled here. You can see where the oil ran down the plate. Lots of dried green oil residue. More signs of oil on the gear teeth and pinions. Someone really drenched this movement in oil in places. Some of these pivots have fresh oil on them, and others dried gooey oil. This movement hasn't had the best of service done on it in the past. The owner mentioned the movement keeps good time, but won't run for very long. Here's the reason. Mainsprings haven't been serviced in a long time. The mainspring lubrication has dried to a thick, sticky tar consistency. It will need to be manually removed with mineral spirits and an abrasive pad. Time to put things back together. Spring mounts for the dial center. I'll get the movement running then see what can be done with this broken screw. Oil the movement. the gong hammer, the rack,
the count wheel. Broken glass on this side. Broken glass on the door. And broken glass on this side. Someone bumped this little clock around a few times. The bottom has two service dates, 1928 and 1938. I'll loosen these screws to remove the glass. Every 10 years it was taken in for servicing. Use a piece of wood to wedge the door up. Wood doesn't leave scratches and tool marks. Common window glass that's been beveled. These brass pieces have a rabbit joint that locks into the uprights on the sides. This screw is how the top is removed. The top trim piece is a piece of cast brass. The mounting screws for the uprights for the sides will need to be removed. This is the parts case that's missing the movement. It's identical, but it's made from a different alloy of brass and a slightly a different color. The glass in it will be a perfect fit for our piece. One small chip here, the trim will cover it. Perfect fit. The door frame is held together with two screws. Remove this broken screw. I found some possible replacement screws that have the same threads on them. These two will be the best fit. The heads on them will need to be polished and blued, same as the original one. I'll be using this glass plate and wet and dry sandpaper to do the polishing. One side is glass that has a rough surface on it, and the other side is nothing more than 2000 grit wet and dry sandpaper. Glued on the glass with Elmer's glue. This was one of the first tools they had us make when I took a horology class years ago. It still works great. The screws have machining marks on the head that need to be removed. 
I could use tweezers to hold the screw, but I prefer handheld. Multi-direction figure eight works good on these. The tool marks are gone, just needs a little more. I'll clean it with a brush before it goes to the 2000 grit sandpaper. Looking better. I'll use this tool for bluing the screws. It assures slow, even, controlled heating. Watch the tool for color change. Straw color first, then purple, and blue is what I need. Once the color starts, it needs to be brought over to the screws while it's up in the color temperature. Flame needs to be focused on the tool, never directly on the screws. Looking good, beautiful color of blue. Nice, they're gonna look much better than that broken one. the pendulum it's working great A nice Ansonia open broadcast escapement brass carriage clock. <laughs> 